Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I am somewhere in the Appalachian Mountains, and it's a great privilege for me to be at this uh, secluded meadow that's about a mile off the road. I shot my ironweed episode here as well, and I came back to do an episode on thistle. Thistle is an amazing, amazing plant. I've never seen butterflies go for anything more voraciously than they do for thistle. I'm going to investigate a little bit about its biology here in this video and share with you some thoughts about would this work in a native garden? I mean, it's so good for pollinators. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. So to create this episode, I had to kind of go down a rabbit hole, and that's to figure out how to identify thistles. There's so many different types, and there's native and non-native, and some of the non-native ones are very, very invasive. Non-natives like bull thistle and Canada thistle can be very invasive, especially in agriculture areas and pastures. They resist herbivory, so cows don't want to graze on them. So they'll form dense, dense uh, clumps of these plants. Canada thistle, furthermore, will spread by stolons. And they will just take over pastures and push out the native plants and the forage that the uh, farmers want to grow for those cattle. And so it's very, very destructive and a huge economic impact in agriculture. The unfortunate thing is a lot of our native thistles get cut down and destroyed or, or herbicided because people are worried that they're invasive. And our native thistles are not invasive. They're a natural part of our ecology and we're a big part of the original prairies. So in this little meadow patch are a number of different native and non-native species. And this one right here is one of our native thistles. The flowers are very large. Boy, ouch, it's very prickly. And you can see that the flower heads are an inch to sometimes even two inches across. And it has this very unusual looking bulb under here that almost looks like a vase. And notice how the thorns recurve on that. And so it almost looks like scales. So the thorn on each scale is laying down next to the gale itself, giving us this very unique look to it. So the leaves of the field thistle are highly divided, kind of lanceolate looking, and you can see that they have sharp spines at the end of each little lobe here. So it's very deeply lobed leaves. But the key characteristic, these leaves do look a lot like bull thistle leaves, but if you turn the leaves over, you'll see that they are white underside. Green on the top, white underside, indicates that this is a field thistle. The bull thistle would be green on the top, and then it would be the same color green underneath. A general rule of thumb on thistles, if they're white underneath, it usually means it's a native thistle. This doesn't always work 100% of the time. There's so much different variety in thistles and hybridization. But uh, as a general rule of thumb, usually if white underside, it's usually a native. The stems of the field thistle may have these little hairs on them. But you can see I can run my finger up and down the stem because there's no spines on it. So, so the stems of the field thistle do not have spines versus here, the spiny bull thistle stem. Looking at these flowers up close, I think the colors and the structure is just absolutely unparalleled. These flowers, I think, are absolutely gorgeous. Look how beautiful that is. Check out the structure of that. Isn't that fantastic? I really can't get over how beautiful these flowers are. I'm wondering if I had changed your view or opinion on thistles in this video. Thistles are much maligned. They're very bad in a lot of places, so they get a bad rap. But our native thistles are really beautiful, valuable uh, plants that were once such a key component to the great prairies and meadow areas uh, 
across the United States before the introduction of all these different species with the European settlers. So field thistle is a biannual, and being a biannual, it produces a rosette of leaves that is generally close to the ground, like this one right here. And here are uh, its leaves. And notice that on the field thistle, the leaves are green on top and white underneath. Now these are like a, a trap for walking around when you're barefoot. They're very, very spiny and herbivores obviously do not like to uh, eat on them. And it's a biannual just like the Queen Anne's lace is around it right here. So in the first year, a biannual produces a rosette of leaves just like this. In the second year, a biannual sprouts up from that rosette of leaves. And this is thistle, and this is what happens in the second year. It takes that energy that it had from the first year and puts it all into basically seed production. Notice how the leaves have changed from being very wide and leafy. Uh, these leaves are very um, thin and lanceolate compared to the original leaves in the rosette. The flower produces copious amounts of nectar, so it is beneficial to our native butterflies in that way. And once it goes to seed, it produces tons of seeds and that are an absolute favorite for goldfinches. So this provides a lot of winter food for many, many of our native bird species as well. This genus of thistle, Circisium, is visited by more species of pollinators than any other species in the United States. They are enormous nectar producers, and they also host over 27 different species of butterflies and moths that feed on the stems and leaves themselves. You can see it's a favorite of great spangled fritillaries and uh, silver spotted skippers. So this native thistle, unlike some of the other non-native thistles, flowers late in the season. And so this is a very, very important nectar source for migrating monarchs and is a key to helping protect the uh, endangered monarch migration phenomena. I'm very impressed right now with the number of butterflies that are here nectaring on these flowers. I find the butterflies here on these flowers are far, far less skittish uh, than uh, butterflies on other flowers. I think they're so intent on getting the nectar that I can just walk right up to them. My camera is sometimes only a few inches away from them and they won't stop. They won't look up from gathering their nectar. I think I've seen more tiger swallowtails here, the state insect of Virginia, by the way, and I think some other states. Um, I haven't seen this many this summer, and here is the most I've ever seen. These flowers are also fantastic nectar producers for bumblebees and hummingbirds as well. While invasive thistles have been flowering most of the summer, these are just beginning to flower now. And I can't leave out the fact that uh, this is a fantastic winter food and preferred food food for goldfinches and other birds. So this seed production will begin late in the season and provide some great overwinter foods for many, many different bird species. So do these flowers, do these plants have a place in your garden? We talk a lot and I'm a big advocate of planting native plants in your garden because that's a place that can be controlled and we can keep out some of these invasive species and help our native flora and fauna and insects and birds that feed on these native plants that have evolved feeding on this food. But are you bold enough to have one of these in your garden? They can be very, very tall. Um, they can be up to seven or eight feet tall. Nobody loves the spines on these things but they're just so terrific uh, for pollinators. 
you can see how this thistle towers above the other plants that are under here. And this, of course, was part of our uh, native prairies. So two other prairie type plants that grow tall and were tall so they can compete with the tall native grasses like big blue stem, little blue stem, Indian grass that are now uh, relegated to only, I think, very controlled places. Here, it's tall fescue is the dominant grass everywhere and it's a non-native. So these fantastic pollinators like Joe Pieweed I've done a feature on, Ironweed that I've done a feature on, and this thistle are really the top, top fall pollinators. And all three are very tall because they were originally from prairies. So in terms of a native garden, you know, you'd have to have some distinct space for this thistle plus the other two species, but it could make a fantastic little prairie-like pollinator ecosystem if you have the courage to plant this thistle. This thistle, again, is not as aggressive as other non-native thistles. It self-seeds, being a biannual, it does die after the second year, so you have to replant seeds again. It may volunteer some plants by prolific seed production, but it's pretty easy, I think, to control this particular species and regulate it in your garden. So a uh, surprising and I think pretty crazy thing about thistles, and this thistle in particular, is that this is edible. All parts of this thistle plant are edible. You can eat the stems, the leaves, the roots, and in fact, all species of thistles are safe to eat. So how would you eat this? Well, the leaves are edible. You can eat them either cooked or raw. And you have to, of course, remove the spines so it's a little bit labor intensive. And I have not done this. I have not eaten thistle. But they said that you can cut these stems and peel them and eat them just like you would celery. And finally, the thistle is even valuable after it's dead. It's said to be a favorite of cavity nesting bees that nest in holes or in, in tubes. You can see sometimes that uh, nature centers will sell uh, native bee nests or hives that are made up of multiple cardboard or bamboo tubes. But this is the natural one. And they say that the thistle is one of the most preferred for a lot of the cavity nesting native bees that are very important to our ecology and our native plants. And lastly, I think it's really beautiful how the people that own this property have preserved this uh, meadow habitat with so many of these native plants in it um, by selective mowing and mowing at only certain times of the year to encourage and foster the growth of these uh, fantastic plants. Well, thanks for watching this mid-August episode here in the Appalachian Mountains, all about thistle. I hope you learned some new things here today and maybe change your opinion a little bit about thistle, a much maligned plant. Remember, if you like what I do on this channel, please subscribe, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. What's your position on thistle? And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. Thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.